Well, up next on the automat of egg salad sandwiches that expired seven years ago and really need to be looked at very carefully, it's our pleasure to present to you Dr. Rachel McKinnon. Uh, we should probably make that Professor Rachel McKinnon, who is a uh, transgendered uh, philosophy professor uh, who, upon the uh, death, uh, hearing the death of, of, uh, of Mr. Koch, uh, said, uh, it's okay to be happy, even celebrate, when bad people die. When uh, she was called out for this tweet, um, somebody mentioned that she'd had an online spat with a feminist social media influencer who apparently has terminal brain cancer. They're on the same team. They just apparently don't like each other very much. Uh, Dr. Rachel McKinnon uh, said, uh, eh, if they're trash, if they're a trash human actively trying to harm marginalized people because of who they are, I think it's justified. Now, here's why I want to talk about uh, Dr. Rachel McKinnon. Uh, Dr. Rachel McKinnon is a, uh, is a trans activist uh, who is also a uh, transsexual who is also uh, apparently the record holder in a number of women's bicycling uh, uh, records. And the reason I come back mm. to the story every single time is because the trans athlete competing in women's sports is, to me, without question, it is the end of the progressive movement because it is the final lack of of any way to reconcile two impossible positions. So Steve, aside from the fact that the charming person like this, we also saw some other charming uh, trans activists just a week ago nailed a dead rat to the door of a, of a woman's yeah. uh, clinic because they weren't gonna treat uh, trans women or, 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 or something to that effect. Um, here's, here's where, here's where the, the conflict comes in. The progressives have to believe that if you want something to be true, it's true. There's no other way to square their philosophy on life. Free health care, well, it's free if you believe it. And free college is free if you believe it. And, and, and being nice to bad guys means it's okay. And scrapping the Defense Department because everybody's just a giant misunderstanding. All of this stuff is based on magical thinking. And if you believe that, if you believe something is true and you want it badly enough, it becomes true, now you got a problem. Because that means that transgendered athletes cannot be discriminated, discriminated against because they are women, because they say they are and they feel like they are, which means that since they are women, they should be allowed to compete in women's sports. And every time they do compete in women's sports, women come in second or third. And there's no way to square this circle, Steve, because you either believe that and every time you do it, you're reminded of the fact that you can't openly say that men are faster and stronger than women are. And so you're stuck with this world where you have to sacrifice the entire athletic ambitions of tens of millions of young biological females on the altar of this nutty belief system. And this is not going to last. Yeah, it's a real shame, too. There are so many great women's sports, and they're going to be dominated by women who simply aren't. I, I want to talk just for a moment about that word marginalized because uh, it reminded me of just one of my favorite stories. Sammy Davis Jr., and this became his tagline, Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, was playing golf with some people and somebody asked him what his handicap was and he thought for a second and said, I'm a one-eyed Negro Jew. <laughs> And it's so true, but you couldn't stop the guy because he didn't let that stop him. He made his own sound, his own moves. No, no, nobody looked or sounded like Sammy Davis Jr., and he was phenomenally successful because of that. And he had to fight a lot of prejudice and a lot of idiots, but he did it anyway because he didn't care about his handicap, and neither did millions of fans, and I'm, and I'm one of them. Uh, that said, you know... I could complain and moan about the destruction that's going on of women's sports, but instead, I think what I'd like to do is sort of uh, uh, open the door to some some new opportunity. And I'm probably going to hell for this one, but I don't care. So instead of having uh, uh, trans women interfere with uh, and destroy women's sports, or try to compete in men's sports where they're not going to be as uh, uh, well equipped to 
to compete for you know the, the hormonal reasons and, and all the rest. I would instead like to uh, just uh, modestly propose a uh, a few sports for for trans women. We have the uh, the women who don't run or throw like girls biathlon. I think there's uh, going to be uh, I think that could be a big hit. Uh, the ladies pickle jar opening contest, the all women's beard growing contest, uh, the almost women's spider killing league. And, of course, the peeing while standing Olympics. And I think there's a, a big future in all of these sports. And uh, instead of being marginalized, I think we can, uh, we can embrace these new competitive activities. Yes, and they deserve to be mocked and they deserve to be laughed at. And the reason they deserve to be mocked and laughed at is because the level of arrogance, vanity, self-centeredness, and just plain narcissism absolutely. is absolutely unbelievably yep. shocking to me. The idea that anybody could make the case that because I feel like a woman, even though I'm in a man's body, means I should be able to uh, compete with women and, and, and win championships is, is so unbelievably self-centered that it's given me an idea about how I'd like to wrap this thing up. But I'll get to that in a second. We have to hear from Mr. Scott Ott first. Scott, I am going to show you a picture now. And after a few moments, let's say five seconds of careful consideration, one of the, one of the three people is, in fact, a cyclist uh, and, uh, and a death uh, 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 for people she disagrees with uh, advocate, uh, Dr. Rachel uh, Professor Rachel McKinnon, Dr. Rachel McKinnon. So one of them is, is Dr. McKinnon, the transgendered male, who came in first. And then the other two are, are they're, just, they're just women. So uh, which one do you think is which? Ready? Here we go. Ding, 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 ding. Dun, 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 dun. It's know, the one in the middle, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so close. I think that that is uh, superfluous for me to answer that question. I don't. Um, I think I it's think, clear as day. No, that's what I'm saying. I think like it's uh, if a picture says a thousand words, so why should I waste words explaining what the picture has already proven <laughs> ir irretrievably, irreconcilably, and uh, impregnatably? I don't know what the other word is. Um, here's the deal. Somehow now, the message to girls is that the ultimate woman is actually a man. And I think that that's, that's right. That this is the new message that's that, that's, that's that right. the progressives are sending. It's I mean, for years, we've been telling little girls that unless they could beat boys at things that boys are uh, built for, then they can't fully revel in their girlness. Um, and now we've got to the point where we said, you know, it, the ultimate expression of femaleness is actually encapsulated in a male. There are so many areas of life that men and women can compete equally in, and it sometimes it comes out that the woman's better and sometimes the man's better. There are accountants and doctors and truck drivers and salespeople of all kinds of professions where it doesn't really matter what sex you are, you can excel in it because it's not a matter of physical strength. It's not a matter of how you were built uh, physiologically. Um, but for some reason, that's not enough. It's not enough to be able to say this brilliant scientist who happens to be a woman has just discovered a cure for something or other. Um, we have to be able to say um, that women are better than men at things that men are clearly better suited for. You know, let's put one in the ring with Mike Tyson, you know, and let's just see how she does. Uh, because in, unless a woman can punch the crap out of Mike Tyson, then how can we fully say that women have achieved their, their full potential? And now it's gotten even worse because now we're saying, why don't we have Mike Tyson pretend he's a girl and get into the ring and have a cage match with Ronda Rousey or whatever her name is and see who comes out on top of that. Um, don't it, tempt it, Mike. I keep, every time I hear a story like this, I keep thinking there can't be many people for whom this is real. Like there can't be many people like Dr. Rachel McKinnon out there who uh, who literally think this way and think that this is this is their entitlement and this is their destiny. There can't be many people supporting him. Um, there can't be many people who are offended by the fact that I just said him. But apparently there are, and it just makes me feel like I've misplaced my planet. Yeah. Well, this is why I love these stories and why I continue to bring them up, because it is a it is a 
paradox from which there is no escape. Either men are allowed to compete as women and win all the time, which absolutely proves the superiority of male athletes over female athletes. It's not a surprise or a coincidence that if you have two transgendered athletes, males pre performing as in a female race, that those two guys come in first or those two ladies come in first is evidence, it's physical in front of your eyes, evidence that men and women are built differently and that men are faster than stronger. That is anathema to the left. At the same time, you cannot say that identity politics is insane because that's their entire, that's the entire, forget the strategy, it's the entire philosophy. If you say, if I, if I tell you with enough conviction that I'm an old Chinese woman, then who are you to say that I'm not? Who are you to hurt my feelings and, 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 and to uh, encroach your, your patriarchal values upon my, upon my inner knowledge of who I really am? And so these two things cannot survive in the same universe. That's why this is such a great example of why progressivism is essentially pretty much over. It has reached the end of rational compassion and turned into a situation where two impossible forces are sitting there facing each other and now you have to decide which one is which. It's, it's, it's just astonishing. I would like to clarify one thing for those of you who um, may be uh, having problems with comprehension ability. Uh, I'm not mocking trans people here. God, no. um, first of all, first of all, I'm mocking uh, Rachel, uh, whose name I can never remember, uh, McKinnon. McKinnon. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm directly attacking uh, Rachel McKinnon because uh, Rachel McKinnon's a vile human being who thinks that people who disagree with you should should die. We've never felt that or said that on the show, and I'd be disgraced and disgusted if we had. But also, I'm mocking trans athletes. And the reason I'm mocking trans athletes is because it seems to me that in many cases, they are doing so much harm to the transgender uh, population that they deserve to be held up to ridicule. And here's, here's the best way I can explain my contempt for trans athletes. Uh, certainly, I understand that they want to race and that they want to succeed as athletes. And, you know, I played Little League Baseball when I was a kid, and I, and I wanted to be a better player than I was. I, you know, I wanted to hit home runs. I hit a triple once. I was happy with that, but I wanted to do better and, and, and stuff. So what I've come to realize is that I was deprived of my dream by an archaic set of white Christian male rules. So I have sued the Key Biscayne Little League uh, uh, squad, the, the, the little organization, Little League organization. I have gone to court against them and, and held them, uh, and won, by the way, with this kind of, this kind of retro uh, fascist ageism that is preventing me from, from, from attaining my dream of becoming a, a, a most valuable player in the Little League team. So I'm starting um, next season. I'm, I'm going to be right out there. I'm uh, going to be playing first base. I may pitch as well. Um, and... Uh, and I am going to dominate. I'm going to utterly dominate the seven to nine year old category of little league baseball. And I'm going to be, and I'm going to be the baseball hero that I always wanted to be. Every hit I get is going to be a home run, and it's easy as hell to hit, by the way. I mean, I spend time in a, in a high speed batting cage now. It's like that. This would be nothing. The, the baselines are so much shorter. I mean, really, uh, just a just a just a single line drive. I probably pretty much make it around there before the ball even rolls to a stop. So, I am really just like to say how how um, happy I am about this, and how and how how finally our society has reached a level of fairness and equality, where a grown man like me gets a chance to play the little league baseball that I've always felt that I was on the inside, and. Um, and as far as the rest of those uh, seven, eight, nine-year-old boys go, they can just pound sand because it's my league, baby. It's my league and it's my turn. I've waited 50 years to be the most valuable player on the Keep Us Game Little League team, and I am going to get my wish because who are you to deny me of that dream that I've held for my entire life? Now, some people may say that it's a pretty low and kind of cheap thing to do. But I say, Bernie in 2020, that's what I say. <laughs> That'll do it for this edition of uh, Right Angle Made Possible by the members of BillWhittle.com. Still believe in things like sanity and upside down and right and wrong and all the rest of that 
quaint archaic stuff that is going to make a smashing comeback. My, my words. If you'd like to be one of those people around the winning team, we'd love to have you. Uh, we don't discriminate against the basis of age, race, sex, sexual orientation, or any of that stuff. We just know that rocks fall down and, and not up. If you want to be one of those people, we'd love to have you. See you next week on Right Angle.